Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here at Cisco Live Amsterdam, and I am pleased to be joined by a Cisco fellow, Carlos Pereira. Uh, he's going to talk to us about FSO, or Full Stack Observability. So Carlos, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, man. It's um, been always a pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> we love doing this. Um, and it's fun to be back, back into the Cisco Live motion, right? In person. Yeah, in person, in person. You know, we want to talk about Full Stack Observability today, FSO. Um, that's kind of a broad term. What does that actually mean to you and, and potentially Cisco? So, full stack observability is actually man, not a Cisco only thing, mm -hmm. it's actually an industry transition. And the full stack observability has to do on bringing multiple operating teams together like security operations, attrition, SecOps, application operations, the IT ops infrastructure, DevOps, we are talking about DevNet, mm -hmm. right? So the developers. So the, the reason for that is pretty much because you now need to bring data from multiple tools that has to do with monitoring and contextualize them, correlate in order to generate insights, and those insights allows you to inform or recommend actions. Why this is happening now? It's happening now because, well, we've been stuck at home for a long time on the <laughs> pandemic, and all the business, they'd have no option but to go digital. So everything became digital, regardless of the buzzword is actually a fact. Mm -hmm. And everybody is now accessing all those applications via digital means, and the experience become the most important criteria where business succeed, because you got options right there. So experience became the KPI of the digital economy. Yeah. Used it to be availability back in the day, then performance, but today it's all about experience. And experience is an end-to-end -end thing. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a silo on the SecOps figure out if something needs to be patched because their patching may impact the experience of the end user because it put part of the infrastructure out that you need to rebalance. You, you see? Yeah, yeah. It brings the whole piece together. So that's the notion of observability on real time, on real time telemetry that goes across the full stack, the full stack on the teams and the operations and obviously the technology stack. Hope it clarifies a little bit. Yeah, it does, and I, I, you know, it seems to me that Cisco's kind of well positioned to really talk about full stack observability in that full stack because Cisco has product and, and offerings in the network layer. We have product and offering in the security layer, and now we're actually moving up into the DevOps and application layer, which is really exciting yeah, and a indeed. new motion for that. But um, can you talk to me uh, potentially about some like very specific use cases that we might want to look at? for any one of those layers or, or ones that we might be focusing on as we um, look to the future of, of FSO? Yeah, it, it's interesting that you touch upon the, the Cisco differentiation, as you said. I believe Cisco is well positioned, as you said, because on the digital economy, networking becomes a substrate. Yeah. In particular, because access to connectivity is everywhere. Everybody has a mobile or a browser mm -hmm. of any sort to access applications. And the internet becomes the whole kind of middle ground for everybody to talk. And security is also pervasive. And Cisco is leading in the industry of both. Yeah. But to your point, everything is tied to the business application, mm -hmm. which obviously has the developers all over this from the beginning right. all the way to production and later on. And the main use cases to your point that we see, Cisco has like seven use cases that we have been baked and testing and validated for over almost a year and a half. We have customers adopting in production. Let me tell you the two most popular ones. Okay. And the one that sounds kind of obvious has to do with what I was telling before. It's very hard to address, but Cisco brought the piece together and we have this massive adoption. And it relates to the fact of every employee on a corporation or even you as a, as a person, you most likely are working part of the days from home these days. Mm -hmm. And all of the applications that are accessing, either a SaaS services for your company or an application that your business put to you or anything that you're buying a pizza or <laughs> getting right. a ride, you either are consuming a mobile application on, a, let's say, a phone or a pad and, or a browser, right. right? So the end user experience is manifested by that interaction. In accessing an application, that application may be running on a public cloud, mm -hmm. may be running on your own data center for compliance reasons or whatever that is. Most likely have a hybrid application and you may access in a SaaS services straight or that are dependent upon that. So you have the end user, you have those applications with their dependencies and there is a beast in the middle called the internet, <laughs> right? Right. So what happened is 
those end user experience is usually monitored or tracked or defined by the line of business because it relates directly with the business impact. The internet is networking dudes. Right. The application is the application ops. Mm -hmm. And the external dependencies is usually a mix. Mm -hmm. And the develop developers actually consume those APIs. So we have four teams, if not more, because there is cloud ops and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then when something goes wrong, who do you call? Well, and even a dependency, a dependency on service providers that they can't even control, right? Exactly. That is that aspect that you can instrument what you control mm -hmm. or your developer can put on the code, put on the pipeline. But like the internet, you just don't. Right. Or a size API endpoint that you consume if they change the versioning or some of that. I see that all the time. You, you, you see this on the developer world like, oh my gosh. Or the security comes and say, hey, you need to patch something mm -hmm. on a DevOps environment. You just put a new code and push in a pipeline. If that's old application, sometimes you need to refactor the whole thing. and takes weeks or months. Right. So long story short, you have end user, you have internet, you have applications and potentially dependencies. Yes. When something goes wrong and the experience of the end user get affected, mm -hmm. where you start? So, on this digital economy, as I was saying, when experience becomes the most important thing, it's less about troubleshooting only, it's also about a triage what the problem is not. Oh, yeah, like, true. is not on the network. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not going to take the blame as Cisco as usually do. <laughs> or is not on the application. So you don't need to get your developers like crazy trying to fix something because it's not them. Right. Or it is on that neighborhood or that city because it's a local service provider that has a connectivity issue, but it's not an application, so it doesn't affect all the other places. So we put a use case out there that brings this all together. So as you can imagine, is absolutely super popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's another one on FSO that we have. And the second one that I would like to highlight is on application security. Okay. Application security is a combination that goes with runtime, mm -hmm. either for traditional applications developed, let's say, in Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, whatever. Or, in or rather, container or event-driven, even for serverless and stuff. So you have these workload placement protection kind of policies. You have the runtime security itself. Either is a virtual machine or a container or a serverless function, if you will. There is the whole motion of API security mm -hmm. for dependencies and mainly for B2B. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talking about the end user on a mobile phone and use, I use pizza as an example all the time. Yeah, yeah. But the B2B is a big chunk of the business. It's probably the, the enterprise biggest, is biggest the biggest chunk of the business. So you talk about API endpoints and those are his versioning, his rogue APIs, there is API with malformance, how are you going to use the payload of the APIs. All of that on the application security that's uh, one layer up mm -hmm. than traditional firewall or networking security that Cisco leads in the market. So we're bringing application security because, in particular for developers, that's very important. Yes, it is. For a DevSecOps standpoint, to put those practices before the code gets pushed or on that process of a pipeline. But also when you are running in production, a cloud native app, let's say, when you have an API depends, you inspect all the time. Yeah. Because no SaaS provider is going to tell you, hey, I changed the version of my no. API. That has something different. And some things it breaks, or TLS, they change the versioning, and all your policy mandates that you need to have some new hardening, and the API provider hasn't changed this. So it's another very popular one on full stack observability. This one, because it brings security, mm -hmm. infrastructure, and the developers right there. Yeah. So I hope it answered. It was a long answer, but no, I no, get no, excited it because I see people adopting this all yeah. over. And, and I think the challenge sometimes in talking about uh, Cisco's security portfolio, just talking about security in general, is that it has different meanings at different layers of the stack. Oh, yeah. And so uh, what I like about the concept of taking the notion of full stack observability and applying it to security, or the notion of security is saying, we need to bring security, the security conversation to the forefront. Yeah. What does Cisco offer in those situations? How do we take advantage of it? How do we use observability to take advantage of it? And that's, that's an exciting opportunity Indeed. for for and, us in the industry. And, and you touch a point that, if I may, it's a personal opinion. There are articles out there that are being, being interviewed and talking about that. But other vendors are also most likely following the same direction. I'm seeing a trend in the market that is kind of accelerating. Mm -hmm. 
observability and security are coming together. Okay. So what I mean by this is the following. If you look at the world of CISO, the security, usually was send me all the information for security because I have compliance reasons and stuff that I need to protect. So it was more a take information in and you don't need to know anything unless there is something that needs to be We'll fixed. tell you if it's bad, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So on the other hand, the infrastructure people never need to consider many of the security information for their daily things. So if a network is not behaving, you have network security, but the CISO is the one dealing with compliance and malware and phishing and all this kind yeah. of stuff. What happens now, if experience becomes the KPI, it's end to end. Yeah. So all the other ops that are not SecOps need to have security information because it may affect the experience of the end user. Yeah. Let's say if a stroke by a malware and half of your infrastructure is in quarantine, you may have a very well unbalancing of supply and demand, yeah. which may affect you as an end user looking at an app and say, I'm going somewhere else because those guys cannot slice my credit card mm -hmm. to buy my pizza, as I yeah, mentioned yeah. before. So the infrastructure, the application, the cloud ops need security information. Yeah. On the other hand, the CISO side of the house needs information beyond security devices and, and tool sets because that has correlation that impacts security as well. Right. So this is coming together. That's exciting. It, it is exciting, it's happening in the industry. It's not like I'm saying the, there is a merge of teams. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying that there is contextualization of telemetry that needs to happen just because experience is trumping better of other things. And there is compliance that needs to exist, all of this is there. But as it relates to consumption, consumption rather, security and observability is indeed coming together. It's an area that Cisco is forefront. We launched runtime security for traditional apps two and a half years ago. Yeah. And now we are much stronger on the DevOps and DevSecOps motions with the developers because for them it can be complex because another discipline. So we are trying to make it very easy because then they become providers of the information and consume this as part of their pipeline. It's exciting times, as you yeah. can tell. I've been hearing some talk around uh, the uh, whole conference about the uh, FSO platform, and so yeah. it sounds like maybe that's where the convergence might be occurring. Um, yeah. Can you talk about oh, yeah. the, the yeah. FSO so platform and where we're going with that? You're going to be proud now, you know okay. what I'm going to say. <laughs> the Cisco FSO Full Stack Observability platform, at this event on Cisco Live here in Amsterdam, we are doing a tech preview. Mm -hmm. You may say, what tech preview? It's yeah. not a product. Well, Cisco, typically when you launch a product on any other line of business, you have a product, you have a SKU, you, 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 all of this. This time, on, we are doing a tech preview, mm -hmm. which is previewing the arts of the possible, what you can do on full stack observability. Mm -hmm. So what we are showing here is the APIs. Okay. The SDK that we're planning to put out there, how the data model and the entity model works, how we enrich the entity model, because you have nine degrees of extensibility on the platform that is unique in the industry. Yeah. For the entity model, new aggregation can put your own code on the platform and generate signals out of the oh, signals. Wow. It's all meant to developers, the partners, there is line there. If you're gonna go there, you're gonna get on the line to, <laughs> to look at that. And it's so freaking cool, because observability is based on metrics, events, logs, and traces. That's okay. the whole melt okay. stack, mm -hmm. which is the FSO platform for Cisco is based on. But our demo, or our, I would say, applications on top of a platform that you build, protect, review, is based on Star Trek. So you have the ships, how many rooms, how many people are on the ships, how many torpedoes you get to one and another, which means you get metrics. If I hit someone, there is a tracing, how the torpedo went to for the rebels or for the Imperials. <laughs> Look, we did it for fun but also a way to show, hey, this is a full stack observability platform that yeah. it can do anything as it relates to observability across the full stack. No wonder why you have developers or our partners like, I want to get access to this. I need a sandbox, all of that. So wait and see because I'm working right here on DevNet to bring this together yeah. and make it closer to general availability of the full platform that's around Cisco Live in the US okay. to enable developers have the sandbox on DevNet, all of the good things that you guys has always been providing for our developers community here. 
well, that's a really exciting opportunity for Cisco customers and partners to tap into the strength of, of full stack observability and actually see it in action, and really all the way up to the application developers, which is something that, that we've, we're really, really excited about here I, in DevNet. <laughs> if, I, if I may, mm -hmm. one of the things that we announced this week, it's already made available, <clears throat> is an industry-first notion of business risk observability. Okay. We took runtime security, API security, thread intelligence from Talos, and vulnerability scoring for Kenna. We build this all together, and we show a business risk scoring that is related to an application, but from the impact on the business, combined with the likelihood for a vulnerability to be exploited. Oh, wow. So instead of you taking like the traditional CV classification of critical, high, medium, or low, mm -hmm. we actually put intelligence associate this to the likelihood of exploitation at the business level. Yeah. So this is available today, and our plan is to work with DevNet to expose this as a functionality that not only stays on the dashboard, to make this available on API so it can ingest in their systems up front, wow. and this be part of the intelligence for workflows or part of the code. It is exciting. Buddy. That's awesome because organizations, they have so many areas that they have to do an evaluation on when they're deploying an application from you know, how the hardware is running through the network implementation up to uh, the actual application deployment. And so being able to do that evaluation uh, so quickly, take in all of, the end, uh, all of the points that they have to do that evaluation and literally get a score that says, this is a good idea or this is a bad idea, yeah. <laughs> is, is, that's awesome. It is, it is absolutely, and a lot of customers because it's shipping now, and everybody that has secured up on AppDynamics, for instance, it's already available there. Yeah. There's no extra license for the people that already have this kind of, of implementation. So, awesome. it is absolutely great. It, it's nice to be here, man. It's nice to be back with DevNet in person on the DevNet Zone, DevNet Theater. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Carlos, and we really appreciate it. Everyone keep an eye out for more information about FSO uh, from Cisco and the FSO platform. Thank you. Thank you.